Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins in 1917, during World War I, German soldiers fighting hard on the battlefield. Heinrich, a young soldier, is ordered to go over the trenches, despite his fear. He sees another soldier climb the ladder and get killed. Despite this, his commander urges him on. Heinrich charges into enemy territory, witnessing the deaths of many comrades. He tries to help a fellow soldier, but fails. Eventually, he runs out of bullets, and fights with a shovel. After the battle, German soldiers collect the uniforms of the dead, including Heinrichs. These uniforms are cleaned and repaired, so they can be used again by new soldiers joining the war effort. In North Germany, 17-year-old Paul Boimer joins his friends Albert Kropp, Franz Mola, and Ludwig Bem at school. They eagerly discuss enlisting in the Imperial German Army, but Paul's father refuses to sign the required permission letter. Determined to join together, the friends convince Paul to forge his father's signature. Excitement fills the air, as they listen to their principal's patriotic speech, stirring their sense of duty and pride in serving their country. Eager to prove themselves, they cheer and eagerly anticipate their deployment to the battlefield. At the recruitment office, Paul is swiftly approved, and handed a uniform bearing the name Heinrich instead of his own. Unbeknownst to them, these uniforms once belonged to soldiers who perished in a previous battle. Undeterred, the recruits banter and jest as they prepare for the journey ahead, their youthful optimism masking the grim realities of war awaiting them. Following the issuance of their uniforms, Paul and his comrades embark for the battlefield, their spirits high as they sing and march in unison, blissfully unaware of the impending darkness that awaits them. Stationed in northern France near La Malmaison, a mere 25 kilometers from the Western Front, they are assigned to the 78th Reserve Division. Upon arrival, they are greeted with reminders of the harsh realities of war, muddy trenches, strict weapon maintenance, and the ever-present threat of danger. Forced to relinquish their rucksacks to aid in transporting the wounded, they press on, their anticipation mingling with apprehension. Suddenly, chaos erupts as a deafening explosion rattles the ground, sending tremors of fear through the ranks. Orders are barked to don gas masks, and amidst the panic, Paul assists Ludwig in securing his, narrowly averting disaster when the gas canisters fail to ignite. Yet, Paul's relief is short-lived, as he incurs the wrath of his lieutenant for his delayed response, enduring punishment as he continues to trudge forward, the weight of his mask a constant reminder of his misstep. Arriving at the front lines, they are greeted not by the glory they envisioned, but by the harsh realities of trench warfare. It is amidst this grim backdrop that they encounter Stanislaus Kaczynski, a seasoned soldier, whose wisdom and camaraderie offer a glimmer of solace amidst the chaos. As night falls, the silence is shattered by the approach of unseen adversaries, prompting Paul's eager anticipation of battle. Yet his bravado is swiftly shattered when his shot misses its mark, drawing enemy fire, and leaving him shaken but unharmed. In the aftermath, Kaczynski imparts invaluable advice, urging caution and vigilance in the face of danger. It is a harsh lesson learned amidst the relentless brutality of war, one that will shape their understanding of survival in the trenches of the Western Front. As night descends, the tranquility of the trench is shattered by the relentless barrage of heavy artillery. In a desperate bid for safety, the commander orders all troops to seek refuge within the confines of the bunker. Amidst the chaos, Ludwig's nerves fray, his resolve waning as he voices his longing for home. Tensions escalate as a panicked soldier, driven by fear, defies Kaczynski's attempts to restrain him, darting recklessly into the line of fire, and meeting a swift demise at the hands of the enemy. His ill-fated action compromises their position, leaving them vulnerable to the relentless onslaught. As the bombardment intensifies, the bunker quakes under the force of the explosions, threatening to collapse upon them. Urgency mounts as the lieutenant issues orders to evacuate, but before all can escape, tragedy strikes as the structure crumbles, trapping Paul beneath the rubble. Miraculously unscathed but shaken to the core, Paul emerges from the debris, confronted by the grim reality of war, as he is tasked with the solemn duty of retrieving the dog tags of fallen comrades. Among them lies Ludwig, whose lifeless form is a stark reminder of the brutality around them. Months pass, and the toll of war weighs heavily on the German forces. Matthias Erzberger, weary of the mounting losses, advocates for peace, seeking to initiate armistice talks with the Allied powers. Meanwhile, Paul and Kaczynski navigate the harsh realities of occupied territory, defined by scarcity and uncertainty. In a daring act of defiance against hunger, they venture to a nearby farm in search of sustenance. Their mission is jeopardized when their theft is discovered by the farmer. Narrowly escaping the farmer's wrath, they return to base, where they share their ill-gotten gains with comrades, who have become like family amidst the trials of war. 
Amidst the taste of stolen food and fleeting moments of camaraderie, they find solace in the chaos, clinging to the small joys that punctuate their grim reality. The next day, while engaged in the mundane task of peeling potatoes, their routine is interrupted by the sight of local women passing by. It is Franz who summons the courage to approach and accompany the women home, earning admiration tinged with envy from Albert. Soon, letters from loved ones arrive, a bittersweet reminder of the lives they left behind. Paul, acting as the voice for Kat Ksinski, reads a heartfelt letter from his wife, expressing concern for his ability to adapt to civilian life once the war ends. In the quiet of the night, Franz proudly displays a scarf gifted to him by a French woman, a token of a brief encounter, that offers a glimpse of humanity amidst the brutality. Their respite is short-lived, as they are tasked with a mission to locate missing recruits, only to discover a grim fate. The recruits, unaware of the deadly gas lurking in the air, had removed their masks too soon, resulting in their tragic demise. On November 9, 1918, General Friedrichs and the German delegation embark on a train bound for the forest of Compiègne, to negotiate a ceasefire. However, Friedrichs, consumed by a fervent desire for continued conflict, defies the ceasefire talks, and orders an attack before French reinforcements arrive. As negotiations commence in the forest, Paul and his regiment are roused from their slumber, and ordered to march towards the front lines, preparing for a fateful assault on the French positions. Through the dark hours of the night, they trudge forward, the weight of an impending battle heavy on their shoulders. By the morning of November 10, the Germans stood poised on the brink of conflict, their resolve tested, as they faced the relentless barrage of artillery fire. Advancing towards the French trenches, they engage in brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat, seizing the enemy's front line. In a fleeting moment of respite, Paul Kaczynski and Jaden stumble upon food and eagerly partake. Yet, even as they indulge, the looming specter of conflict and the harsh toll of war weigh heavily on their weary souls. The relentless drumbeat of war reaches a fever pitch, as Paul and his comrades find themselves facing the terrifying onslaught of St. Cameron tanks, bearing down upon their trenches. With weapons at their ready, they brace themselves, as the tanks unleash a devastating barrage, obliterating the once solid defenses of the German soldiers. In the chaos and carnage that ensues, Paul watches in horror, as his fellow soldiers are mercilessly cut down by the tank shells. Desperate for some semblance of control, he takes aim, firing his weapon, in a futile attempt to halt the advancing machines of destruction. Franz becomes separated from Paul, and his attempts to flee are met with the unforgiving wrath of war. Amidst the chaos, a glimmer of opportunity presents itself, as Paul and Kaczynski spot a chance to take out an enemy tank. With nerves of steel, they approach from the rear, planting grenades on its tracks, and engaging in a deadly dance of gunfire with any French soldiers who dare to emerge. The horrors continue to unfold before Paul's eyes, as he witnesses the French lighting up any survivors with flamethrowers, the screams of the wounded echoing in his ears. He sees Albert, once a friend and comrade, now consumed by flames as he attempts to surrender. Kaczynski, ever the steady hand, grabs Paul, dragging him back towards the safety of the German trenches. Even amidst the retreat, there is no respite from the fury of battle, as a lieutenant orders Paul to retrieve abandoned guns and ammunition, before fleeing. Terrified and alone, Paul navigates the treacherous terrain, his heart pounding in his chest, as he stumbles and falls into a crater in no man's land. It is here that he comes face to face with a French soldier, their struggle for survival ending in a moment of brutal violence, that leaves Paul shaken to the core. Meanwhile, in the corridors of power, Erzberger learns of Kaiser Wilhelm's abdication, and receives the order to accept the Allied terms for an armistice. The news of impending peace filters down to the weary soldiers, their celebrations tinged with the bitter knowledge of the lives lost, and the scars that will never heal. Yet, amidst the fragile celebrations, tragedy strikes once more as Jaden, unable to bear his injuries and the horrors of war, takes his own life. Paul, haunted by the loss of yet another friend, is left adrift in a world that no longer makes sense. As the clock ticks towards the fateful hour of eleven, General Friedrich orders one last desperate attack, determined to end the war on a note of German victory. Discontent simmers amongst the ranks, dissenters gather and are executed as Paul, numb and hollow, marches towards the front lines once more. The final moments of the war approach with a grim inevitability, as Paul and his fellow soldiers charge towards the French trenches. The air is thick with the acrid scent of gunpowder, and the screams of the dying, as Paul fights with a ferocity born of desperation. In the heart of the battle, Amidst the mud and blood-soaked trenches, Paul finds himself face to face with a French soldier. For a fleeting moment, time stands still as they stare into each other's eyes. In an instant, it is over. Paul feels the searing pain of a bayonet piercing his body, darkness closing in as the world fades away. 
When the fighting finally ceases, a heavy silence descends upon the battlefield, broken only by the distant cries of the wounded. As Paul stumbles out of the bunker, the devastation around him hits with crushing force. The war is over, but at what cost? Amidst the stillness, the young German recruit finds Paul's lifeless body, retrieving Franz's scarf as a solemn token of remembrance. Panning out, the stark reality of the Western front line is revealed, millions perished for the sake of a few hundred meters of territory. The cost of war, etched in the mud and blood of countless souls, is a haunting reminder of the futility and tragedy of conflict. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.